Hold on to everything you thought you knew about the cosmos. The story we have been told about the universe's genesis might be a cosmic fabrication. A new theory dares to question the ultimate origin, suggesting that the Big Bang wasn't the starting gun, but a mere echo in an infinitely grander cycle. For decades, the Big Bang has reigned as the leading explanation for how our universe began, a colossal burst from an unimaginably dense point that set everything into motion. But now, scientists are starting to say, what if we've had it all wrong? Fresh data and stunning new observations are challenging the story we've long accepted. The universe, it seems, may not have emerged exactly the way our textbooks told us. At the heart of this growing mystery lies a major puzzle known as the lithium problem, and it's causing serious cracks in the foundation of modern cosmology. Add to that the long-standing mystery of why matter triumphed over antimatter, and we're left with more questions than answers. The discoveries pouring in from the James Webb Space Telescope are amplifying these doubts, giving rise to a wave of scientific skepticism about the traditional Big Bang model. With more experts joining the debate, the lithium problem has become a central focus. According to the Big Bang Theory, scientists can calculate exactly how much light lithium should have formed in the first few minutes after the universe's birth. But when astronomers comb through data from the James Webb Space Telescope, they're finding far less lithium than expected in the universe's oldest stars. This lithium shortfall isn't a brand new mystery. Even before the launch of the JWST, both the Hubble Space Telescope and ground-based observatories had identified ancient stars that, according to theory, should contain visible traces of this early lithium. Yet, time and again, the numbers just didn't add up. Now, with the JWST peering even further back into cosmic history, the trend continues. No significant lithium concentrations in sight. This deepening discrepancy raises a serious question. Can the Big Bang Theory still hold up under this weight of evidence? Some scientists believe a new explanation might be waiting in the wings. The Galactic Origin of Light Elements Model, or GOL for short. According to this idea, lithium wasn't forged in a fiery cosmic explosion at the dawn of time, but instead formed gradually within the first stars of the universe. For years, scientists believed that the earliest stars not only lit up the young universe, but also gradually enriched it with the essential ingredients for life. But as our understanding deepens, more questions continue to emerge, questions that challenge the very foundation of modern cosmology. One pressing mystery is the surface brightness of distant galaxies, how light is distributed across them, and an even more profound enigma, the imbalance between matter and antimatter in the universe. Known as the matter-antimatter problem, this puzzle strikes at the heart of why anything exists at all. In theory, the Big Bang should have created equal amounts of matter and antimatter. But if that were true, every particle of matter would have met its twin and annihilated in a flash of pure energy, leaving behind a lifeless, empty cosmos. Yet, here we are, living on planets made of matter, orbiting stars surrounded by galaxies. So what tipped the scales? To unravel this, we must dive into the very nature of matter itself. Everything we see, planets, stars, even you and me, is made up of matter. Atoms, composed of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Antimatter, on the other hand, is made up of mirror particles. For every particle in matter, there's a theoretical opposite, like the electron's positively charged twin, the positron. Why matter won this cosmic showdown remains one of the most intriguing and unsolved questions in physics. Just like the electron has its opposite, the positron, every particle of matter has a corresponding antiparticle. The proton, for instance, has an antiproton, identical in mass, but with a negative electric charge. When these two opposites meet, they don't just cancel each other out. They annihilate in a burst of pure energy, typically released as high-energy radiation. According to the standard model of physics, the Big Bang should have produced matter and antimatter in perfectly equal amounts. There's no known reason why one should have been favored over the other. And yet, 
When we look around the universe today, we see a glaring imbalance. Everything we observe, galaxies, stars, planets, and life itself is made of matter. Antimatter, by contrast, is virtually non-existent. It appears only fleetingly in high-energy cosmic rays or carefully controlled experiments on Earth. But in the vast reaches of space, there's no sign of antimatter galaxies or stars. None. This brings us to one of the greatest paradoxes in physics. If the early universe really had equal amounts of matter and antimatter, they should have annihilated each other completely. The result? A universe filled with nothing but radiation. No atoms, no light, no stars, no life. So how did matter manage to win the cosmic tug of war? Scientists believe there must have been a tiny imbalance, an ever so slight excess of matter over antimatter in the early universe. Just one extra particle of matter for every billion particles of antimatter would have been enough to shape everything we see today, from galaxies and stars to planets and people. Without this minuscule surplus, the universe would have vanished in a flash of energy, leaving behind nothing but radiation. No atoms, no structure, no life. But where did this imbalance come from? Was it a fluke of nature, a stroke of luck, or perhaps something deeper, intentional, even intelligent? While these questions stir philosophical debate, physics offers a more grounded explanation. CP violation, short for charge parity violation. This refers to the phenomenon where certain particles and their antiparticles don't behave exactly the same, breaking a fundamental symmetry in nature. We've observed traces of CP violation in the decay of certain mesons during experiments. But here's the problem. What we've observed so far isn't nearly enough to account for the overwhelming dominance of matter in our universe. This suggests there's more to the story, something still hidden from us. Perhaps unknown particles or undiscovered processes tip the scales just enough to favor matter. Theoretical concepts like baryogenesis and leptogenesis aim to trace this mystery back to the moments right after the Big Bang, when these subtle imbalances may have taken root. Some bold theories suggest that the matter-antimatter mystery might be solved by parallel universes, realms where antimatter dominates, restoring balance on a multiversal scale. While fascinating, these ideas remain purely speculative, lacking any direct evidence. For now, they're more science fiction than science fact. Still, the matter-antimatter asymmetry is far more than just an unsolved riddle in particle physics. It's a gaping hole in our understanding of the universe's very origin, a cosmic puzzle that cuts to the core of why anything exists at all. As we follow the trail of this mysterious imbalance, two major theories come into focus, baryogenesis and leptogenesis. These frameworks attempt to explain how, despite being born in equal amounts during the Big Bang, matter managed to survive, while antimatter all but vanished. Let's start with baryogenesis, the theory that seeks to explain how the universe ended up with a surplus of baryons, the particles that make up atoms like protons and neutrons. According to this idea, there must have been a moment just after the Big Bang when the laws of physics allowed for a tiny violation of symmetry, a subtle difference in how matter and antimatter behaved. This is where CP violation comes into play again. In this fleeting moment, that tiny behavioral difference could have led to just enough excess matter to avoid total annihilation. The rest, matter and antimatter would have destroyed each other in brilliant bursts of energy, leaving only a sliver of matter behind to build the universe we now see. Closely tied to this is leptogenesis, which focuses on leptons, lightweight particles like electrons and neutrinos. In this scenario, early interactions involving heavy neutrinos might have tipped the balance, creating an excess of leptons that later translated into a surplus of baryons through linked processes. In some of the most intriguing theories, like the seesaw mechanism, a key role is played by hypothetical, ultra-heavy right-handed neutrinos. These elusive particles, if they existed, could have decayed shortly after the Big Bang, creating an initial imbalance among leptons. Over time, this lepton asymmetry could have been transformed into a baryon asymmetry, the very seed of all matter we see today. 
This transformation likely involves phaleron processes, exotic transitions predicted by the standard model of particle physics, which allow for the conversion of leptons into baryons under extreme conditions. While both baryogenesis and leptogenesis are mathematically sound and offer elegant explanations, they remain theoretical. So far, we've found no direct evidence of the heavy neutrinos these models require, nor of new, stronger sources of CP violation. But hope is far from lost. Ongoing research at CERN and the Large Hadron Collider is pushing the boundaries of what we know about neutrinos. In the coming decade, we may finally unlock the secrets of these ghost-like particles and uncover how a perfectly balanced Big Bang gave rise to the tiny asymmetry that allowed stars, planets, and life to form, including us. And yet, another layer of mystery remains. What if our universe isn't alone? What if there's another cosmos, hidden from view, where antimatter, not matter, is dominant? It might sound like science fiction, but in modern theoretical physics, this idea has real weight. If the Big Bang produced equal amounts of matter and antimatter, then where did all the antimatter go? One possibility is that it didn't vanish at all, but rather split off, forming a parallel mirror universe composed entirely of antimatter. In this scenario, the cosmos may have bifurcated at its birth, creating two symmetrical realities, one dominated by matter, ours, and another existing in parallel where antimatter reigns. What if the imbalance between matter and antimatter isn't an imbalance at all, but simply a separation? In this vision, the universe didn't favor one over the other, instead it divided them. Matter filled our cosmos, while antimatter formed a mirrored counterpart, a cosmic anti-imprint of our reality. This symmetrical solution offers an elegant twist to the matter-antimatter problem. It could even help explain some of the deeper mysteries of the cosmos, such as why the laws of physics seem so finely tuned, or why certain gravitational phenomena remain stubbornly unexplained. If this anti-universe exists, it wouldn't be completely disconnected. It must, in theory, be linked to our own. And as science advances, we may one day uncover signs of this hidden sibling universe, but the idea goes deeper still. Some physicists speculate that dark matter, the invisible substance believed to make up about 85% of all matter in the universe, might actually be antimatter. Not missing mass in the traditional sense, but an entire shadow reality made of antimatter, one that doesn't interact with light or electromagnetism, only gravity. That's why we can't see it or touch it, but we can feel its pull on galaxies and cosmic structures. It's there, just out of reach. These bold theories dovetail with the concept of the multiverse, a family of universes born out of quantum physics. In this view, our universe is just one bubble in a vast cosmic foam. Each universe could operate under its own set of physical laws, with different mixtures of matter, antimatter, and even timelines. The mysteries we encounter, like dark matter, antimatter disappearance, or the arrow of time, might simply be the echoes of rules from neighboring realms bleeding into our own. When we piece it all together, we're brought back to the idea of a golden cosmic balance, a universe perfectly symmetrical in its grand design. But for now, all these ideas remain in the realm of theory. There's no direct experimental proof of an anti-universe, nor solid evidence that dark matter is antimatter. In fact, it's possible that assuming such a neat balance exists at all might be a mistake. These lingering mysteries highlight just how vast the gaps in our understanding truly are. The more we learn about the cosmos, the more we realize how much remains unknown. Science often feels like an ever-expanding map. Every new discovery adds detail and fills in gaps, but just as we complete one region, we find that entire countries or even continents remain unexplored. There may be hidden dimensions beyond what we can see, or forces and phenomena within our known universe that we have yet to comprehend. The journey to uncover the universe's deepest secrets is far from over, and that's what makes it so thrilling. Subscribe now to the channel and join us on this adventure with new videos released regularly, diving deeper into the mysteries of our cosmos.